Good day everyone, this is going to be a 1598 sort of um, crash course tips video. Um, if you haven't built 1590As and you're after some basic information to get you into um, uh, get you into building 1590As, what you need, what you can do, uh, what to look out for, what will fit in a 1590A and things like that. Um, so before we even start looking at it, um, if you're new to guitar pedals you might even know what a 1590 is. Uh, 1590 a, sorry, what a 1590A is. 1590A is the um, sort of standard size that Hammond's come up with for um, an enclosure. There's, you don't have to buy a Hammond enclosure to have a 1590A. You can get them on Tadar and they're just basically knockoffs of, um, of the Hammond specification. Um, so, uh, you know, they might be made by Foresight or um, Sonar is another one that makes them. Um, so, yeah, they're, they're all roughly the same size. They've all sort of copied the um, dimensions of a Hammond enclosure. So this is, yeah, a, uh, a 1590A and here's a comparison between a 1590A and 1590B. 1590B is a pretty standard sort of size. You can see that it's, you know, probably half the volume really of a 1590B, so they're quite small. So you have to uh, kind of plan what you're doing and um, you have to be aware of a few things when you build them and there's some things that can help you make your life a lot easier um, to know. So, they're tricky. They're not something that a novice would want to do if, you, if it's your first pedal. You know, it's probably, I mean, you might be able to pull it off but it's going to be, it's, it's going to be tricky. So, um, yeah, it's probably something that you'd probably want to do if you're a sort of intermediate. I'm not a huge 1590A expert. Um, I've built a few. I'll show you actually what I've built down here. There's some of my 1590A builds. Actually, it's probably uh, the large majority of the um, 1590A builds. And um, because they're not all labeled, I'll just um, uh, tell you what they are. Um, this is a, the 7 Minute Fuzz, the, the fuzz kit that I've got on my web store. Easily fits in a 1590A. Um, this is a uh, Color Sound One Knob Fuzz. This, that's a Mad Bean. Um, pedal and that again easily fits in a 1590A. Uh, this is a buffer, um, it's a custom buffer that I made, I um, uh, manipulated someone else's circuit um, and doesn't even have a knob so that's like probably got to be one of the one of the easiest um, uh, builds to get inside a 1590A because it's just there's just there's just bugger roll inside it. Uh, and then we've got um, these are actually these ones over here are actually pretty much all the kits from my web store. For some reason, I just whenever I just whenever I make a PCB layout, I just end up making it so that that it can fit in a 1590A unintentionally. Um, I have this habit of really sort of miniaturizing the um, the circuit as small as I can. It makes the 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 manufacturer of the uh, the fabrication of the PCB is cheaper, um, and I just like things to be compact, particularly with guitar pedals when you've got limited room, whether it be a 1590A or a 1590B. So it sort of um, sort of works better for everyone if it's um, if it's a small board. So these are all on my um, on my web store, and I've built these up as kind of test units to make sure the build uh, the the circuit works, of course, and that also that they'll fit into 1590As because on the web store I've said that they fit fit into 1590A, so I have to make sure that they will. So from the, these two at the front here are actually the Germanium, um, the Germanium Booster, which is the Range Master with the Tone Control. Um, and this one's actually tricky to fit in a 1590A because I, I didn't originally uh, make it to fit in a 1590A and you may need low profile jacks to easily fit it into a 1590A. We're going to go into hardware um, and components later on and what will fit and what won't. Um, but uh, you'll, you'll often hear me say special hardware. You don't need special hardware to fit it inside um, uh, a 1590A. You, you'll understand what that means a bit later on. Um, but one hint is this one has special hardware and you can see it's got the, those black plastic jacks. This one doesn't have special hardware and it's got the metal um, jacks, the, the normal ones that you're used to. I think they're actually Nutrik. Um, 
the open style jacks and I'll show you the difference between those later on. Um, so that one's got special hardware, that one doesn't. Um, and this one was much trickier to get in than this one. So the Germanium Booster, uh, it does fit, but it's tricky. Um, so yeah, the, the, the Germanium Booster does fit, but yeah, it's a, it's a little bit tricky if you don't have special hardware. If you've got special hardware, it's much easier. So that's um, another example. And then you've got, um, this is the SMD Boost, which is another kit. These are all my kits, so I won't keep saying that. This is the SMD Boost, um, and it's an easy fit. Uh, this is the Durton Boost, um, which is another easy fit. This is the uh, Ember Drive, which is another easy fit. This one is the Fuzz, the, the fuzz Face, um, the Fuzz, uh, sorry, the Face Master, which has the tone control, the charge pump, the bias, um, and the bias trim pot on it as well. Um, and it's a, um, it's, uh, I wouldn't say tight, it's kind of a bit tight. Um, I actually thought it was pretty easy to put together um, and you'll notice that it doesn't have any special hardware on it either. Now, I think the best thing to go into now is to actually show you an example of the inside of some of these so you can actually see um, how I fit them in and the difference between special and non-special hardware and all that sort of business. Just because these have special hardware doesn't actually mean that I needed to use special hardware for them as well. I actually just use these plastic jacks on these ones because um, I'd run out of Nutric jacks, so I just use the, um, the low-profile jacks instead. So let's open a couple of these up and have a look inside so you can see um, how to, how to um, lay it out and the um, advantages and disadvantages of certain things. So this is roughly the chronological order that I built these pedals. This being the first one down here and going kind of that way. Um, and the first thing that um, I realized was that the LED um, for, for a 1590A should definitely be in um, left or right of the three pole double throw. Not here, like you do with a standard pedal. Um, it's, it just takes up room that you just don't have. It's just best to put it down the bottom. You, could, you may be able to fit a five millimeter pot to the left or right of the switch, but I mean, you've got to, it's a bit of a tight squeeze. It's best just to use a three mil if you ask me. And these water clear three mils are so bright, I don't think it make, makes much difference anyway. Um, so if you look at the back, um, if we look at the inside of this one, um, now this was uh, my first attempt at a 1590A and um, I'll just move the camera so you can actually see inside. So as you can see, um, this is the first one that I built and it's got all the errors. Um, these jacks are open style jacks and you can get away with open style jacks but these ones are just far too close. Um, if I put in a couple of, um, of these little link um, uh, these little, little link connectors you can see that the tips are almost touching each other um, and you know you, you can also uh, I had to bend bend back that um, the shield lug on the on the jack as well to get it out of the way. Um, it's just too close. Um, so you would probably do this with special hardware, or I mean, also you can see that there's a fair bit of space that I've left down here. So I wasn't very accurate um, as far as that goes as well. Um, and um, these solder lug um, PCB, uh, sorry, uh, the pins with the, uh, the three pole double throws with the pins. Um, I think this one was from Mammoth. They've got these very thin um, sol You can actually still use them as solder, uh, solder lug. You can put the wire will fit through the hole, but it's like threading a, a, a wire through through the eye of a needle. These these the hole for the wire is just so small. Um, but these um, these jacks are very, very uh, sorry switches. Let me get this right. These switches are very uh, small and compact, so they're quite good in that respect. Um, and I've just used a, a standard DC jack up there, a 16 millimeter pot, and um, and, and done this um, non-standard mounting horizontal thing going on over here as well, um, which was obviously my attempt at trying to fit all this, you know, without um, uh, as a first attempt. And I know I remember that I struggled with it trying to get it all to to work. Um, works fine now, but um, when I was actually piecing it together, it was a bit of a nightmare. Um, so. It's, that's kind of like a what not to do, I guess. Um, mounting PCBs vertically using 16 millimeter pots. Um, uh, these open style jacks you can use. I wouldn't say that it, that it's a it's a no go for the open style jacks, but you have to do it the right way, not this way. It's, they're too close together, um, and also you can you don't you don't necessarily need one of these compact um, uh, three pole double throws either. 
uh, you, I've just been using normal solder lug ones um, for the last five or six that I've built. You just you don't need to save that much room. Depends on the effect, of course. If you've got a massive board in here, you might need to get one of these small ones. Um, so yeah, that's the first one, and that's the not what uh, what not to do. 